What is the proximity effect? Well, my mom would have called it the change in her attitude if we didn't turn that music down. But for this video, it's the bass boost that a cardioid microphone exhibits when it's placed near a sound source. Let me explain. First, this is only true of cardioid mics. The directional pattern is what matters. Omnidirectional mics or any other pattern don't do this. Second, it doesn't matter if the mic is a dynamic or a condenser. If it's a cardioid or unidirectional pattern, it exhibits the proximity effect. Third, even mics that have selectable patterns exhibit the proximity effect when you select a cardioid pattern, even if they don't do it when the other patterns are selected. It has to do with the physics of long wavelengths and the method used to create a directional pattern. So cardioid mics exaggerate bass frequencies when they're placed near a sound source. And the bass boost gets larger as you move the mic closer. Look at the response graph of a typical cardioid mic, the Shure SM58. Notice that at two feet away, the bass response starts falling off gradually from about one kilohertz, and then at about 200 hertz, it drops off significantly. At an eighth of an inch from the sound source, which is the top line, there is more than 12 dBs of boost centered around 250 hertz. That's a lot. This mic and most other vocal mics are purposely designed to have less low frequency response to compensate for the proximity effect. But as you move them closer and closer, it causes a major boost in the low frequency response. What does this mean for you? If you place or hold your mic close, and you should, and you're using cardioids, which you probably are, you get an exaggerated bass response that you need to be mindful of when you're using EQ. Make sure you check out the videos on the inverse square law to learn why you need to put mics close to the source, and the cut method to learn about how to EQ the important low-mid frequencies. I'm Greg Hill for AV Genius.